Have you ever seen a soldier sleep during war? What would be your thoughts if you ever heard that a soldier had fallen asleep during battle? A soldier only sleeps during battle when he's either won or has admitted defeat and holds no value for his life. No serious soldier sleeps at his post. It's the same for every believer. You're at war. You're in a battlefield where light is constantly trying to overcome darkness. Lies are trying to defeat the truth. That which is fake is trying to replace the original. This isn't the time to be sleeping. You can't afford to be reckless at your post. You can't afford to be powerless. Sleeping at your post means a lot of things for the believer, but the core of it is powerlessness. A sleeping man is unconscious. He has no power. He cannot fight despite he's at war. He's unable to see what's going on around him. Sleeping here does not mean being asleep physically. It means being spiritually asleep. Sleeping at war is risky and dangerous, and it's usually associated with prayerlessness. Sleep is associated with night and thus darkness, as we see in 1 Thessalonians 5.5. 5. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunk are drunk in the night. The Apostle Paul identifies the spirit of slumber as a sort of drunkenness, which signifies a sort of stupor or unconsciousness of what's going on around you. You've heard the reference made when someone is in deep sleep, they're really out of it. In other words, they haven't a clue what's going on. Why? Well, because they're asleep. What are some of the characteristics of a sleeping believer? 1. Prayerlessness The very first sign of a sleeping believer is prayerlessness. Prayer is the staff of any Christian. No king can be ordained without his staff. Without the kingly staff, he cannot make commands because the staff backs the ordination and authority of a king. Also, for a child of God, prayer is like a staff required of any Christian to move forward. Any Christian without the staff of prayer is in danger. Prayerlessness is a great threat to your Christian life and your relationship with God. For example, you have a phone for communication. Without your phone, your movement isn't complete. Some people don't have an office, but the phone can serve as an office. A phone is powerful because it gives you information to move. Information is power and it can bring you down or take you up. Just like a Christian, without your staff of prayer, you can't communicate with God. But with prayer, your movement with God is secured. Prayer is the staff of a Christian. Prayerlessness is a great threat to a Christian. Prayerlessness draws you away from God. If you don't pray, it draws you further and further away from God. Prayerlessness brings evil thoughts into your heart and allows a rebellious spirit to crawl into your life and destiny. The cause of many problems in the life of believers is because they don't pray. Jesus knew there's a danger in prayerlessness. He never allowed the spirit of prayerlessness to overshadow him. He kept on praying and never stopped. Never get to the point where you stop praying. The devil realizes how important prayer is to you. The cure to a sleeping believer is prayer. 2. Faithlessness Another sign of sleeping for a believer is that he loses his faith and conviction in those things that he once held dear. He begins to doubt the very same truth he once taught because he's gradually losing his grip on God's word. He's losing touch with the realities he once saw and read there. Once you see someone who begins to despise the very things he used to hold dear, he begins to doubt the power of God to heal, the power of God to deliver, the fact that God is interested in even the most mundane things. It's the trick of the devil and it can be very subtle, almost unrecognizable. Believers need to watch out for this sign. Are you increasing in faith or reducing in faith? 3. You begin to despise spiritual things. Things like service in the house of God, the dedication and commitment you once gave to serving God. You may even justify it and call it growing up. You who once criticized those who came late to church, those who chat in church while God's word is being taught. All of a sudden, you're the one who walks into the service late. You who once jumped at every opportunity to serve God, now you begin to give excuses as to why you've been absent. You used to have certain days when you fasted. All of a sudden, it's become a thing of the past. You now remember that breakfast is the most important meal in the day. Your friends that you once loved to fellowship with are now being avoided like the plague. You need to watch your heart. 4. Iniquity abounds and the love waxes cold. 
The Christian who willfully sins, who enjoys sin, and who makes excuses for habitually sinning, is asleep spiritually. He begins to walk in anger, lust, covetousness, pride, and other lust of the flesh. One of the major goals of Christians is to walk in the fruit of the Spirit and extinguish the fruits of the flesh, but the sleeping believer does the exact opposite. The unrepentant believer cannot effectively be a witness for the Lord and will surely lag behind in the Christian race. The Apostle Paul said, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. 1 Corinthians 9.27 It's therefore important that we don't let sin reign in our mortal bodies, that we should obey it in the lust thereof, to become slaves to sin. Romans 6.12 Dear believers, it's not okay to let sinful practices have mastery over you. It's time to awake to righteous living. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Child of God, if you're experiencing any of the above listed, you're sleeping spiritually, and you need to wake up. The devil is after you. You see, the devil doesn't need to wear a red garment with two horns sticking out of his head before he attacks you. He attacks you in most places where you least expect it. Sleeping spiritually can be likened to vain and comatose. When a doctor deals with a comatose patient, one of the first things he does is to make a quick assessment of the depth of the patient's coma. Now, in medical terminology, there are four levels of a coma. In coma one, the patient is drowsy, but he can still speak and respond to external stimulus. In coma two, the patient is asleep, but he can still open his eyes, and when someone speaks to him or touches him, he can respond. In coma 3, the patient will not respond to sound or touch, but only to painful stimulus, such as pressing one of his nerves against a bone. The deepest type of coma is coma 4, where nothing at all can arouse the patient from unconsciousness. The deeper the level of coma, the worse his condition is. There are also different levels of spiritual coma. Some professed Christians may have gone so deep into spiritual coma that they very well nigh turned completely away from the Lord and don't believe in Christ at all anymore. They've fallen away from the faith completely, and that shows that they were never saved to begin with. The Bible says that the Lord knows those who are truly His, who are truly saved and who are not saved. Those who are saved can never successfully fall away from the faith, but they will eventually awaken from their spiritual coma and come back to God. Do you remember the parable of the ten virgins Jesus tells? where two sets of virgins are awakened. One happens to be wise and have not only the word of God, but they also have revelation on that word. The other group has the same lamp or the same word, but have no clue how to use it, for they have no oil. The sleeping believer is still a believer, but he has thrown his power to the devil. He has no oil, no ability to sustain the fire that he's received at the point of salvation. The oil of the Holy Ghost is meant to help the fire burn brighter but the sleeping believer has traded his oil for recklessness and insensitivity. This is a call to rise up, a call to be sensitive. The devil your adversary is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Choose not to be his prey. Choose not to fall into his trap. Wake up. Stand now and loose yourself from sleep. Give yourself aggressively to prayer. Reawaken your passion. Awake, you who sleeps, and God will give you light. Amen.